Parts bag number six of the Lego Ecto-1 Ghostbusters car. Not a whole lot of parts in this bag. I think all we're doing is going to be fleshing out some of the details of the back of the car here. So a lot of red pieces in here. A couple printed bricks too. Turn this around. It's kind of awkward to build with the big part in front of me and not too much room. I'm going to figure out a better way to do this where I can show more of what's going on and still have room to build. I might have to, that's what I should do. I should get something for my instruction manuals to be in front of me rather than on the side and then tilt it up. That would be, then I'd have all of this. I'll do that maybe next time. to get a little, some sort of a little rack or just prop it up on a couple books. Oh, put that in the wrong spot. mini build. Get this out of the way. Now we got lots of room. There's a couple of ball joints in here. Bring this back. Now, this looks like it sits this way. Must be right on there. Something's going to attach to those ball joints eventually. Oh, I feel like I missed a step. Should be something, oh, because there's two of these. I missed putting one here. There we go. I'm not going to call that a mistake. I'm going to call it an omission. Makes me feel better. I have a printed clock brick. A printed gauge. So we're just adding a little bit of flavor details. Doesn't matter which way the clock goes. I don't suppose it does. Just thought of something I can do for my next video to kind of cut down on some of the editing time. Although it would take a lot of time up front to do this. So am I really saving anything in the long run? But since I gather the pieces for every step before I put it together, or at least I try to, that's the best way to avoid making a, a mistake or missing a piece. I could gather all of those for the whole manual ahead of time, have them ready to go, and then I'm not hunting for the pieces. Because I usually like to cut out the actual searching for the pieces out of the video. But that would take a long time. It would be like 300 steps I'd have to gather pieces for, and then somehow store them individually. All right, now these go, how do these attach? How do these sit in here? They've got these hinges on them so they can flip up. Oh, that's why, okay. So I've got to do that, flip up the hinge so they can sit like this and then they sit in here, I've got to make sure I get the position right. 
Now you can't see this. It goes right in here. That's why it wasn't quite in there all the way. And then they can tilt back a little bit. So I'm going to try to show that. You can just see them right in there. You can tip forward a little bit, then they tip back into position. Small assembly. Ooh, we've got some more printed. Oh, it's not even, that's not even the one I need. I need this one. There should be another one that's got some printing on it. There's quite a few printed bricks. Again, I'm, maybe because these ones are more standard and they're just off the shelf. They're not specifically designed for this set. Still, never argue with printed pieces. Well, one of the good things about a long weekend, it means the Upcoming work week will only be four days. That'll be great. This is another little instrument panel. Just again, some more flavor. Now I need these other two printed bricks, some clear pieces. There, little instrument panel and that goes so there's a little ledge right here and this is going to sit right on top of that which means it doesn't actually touch underneath it just sits on that ledge looks like we have another chair to make all right, this is everything needed for the chair. Another chair. No, oh, that makes like it's going to be eventually like five chairs in here. Now, does this just sit right up against all of that? Yeah, it looks like it. it sits right in there. Need some two scale Lego figurines to fit in here. Because minifigs would be too small. Oh, I just don't need this. I'm not sure I could build reasonably looking figures that would fit this scale. Might have to look that up. See if anybody's done that. How does this attach? Is that right? Yep, that's right. Start the fins. Mostly just sits in there. Now there's another one for the other side here. Now there's two of these as well.
Ooh, that's a tight fit. Is that supposed to go like that? Oh, it's just very tight. All right, there's two of these. We've got our two parts. We've got to put it on the main piece. Okay, so when we put these other pieces on, there's a little Technic slot in there to receive these. So these will just sit right in there. I always love how clever some of this construction is. Just on a lot of sets in general, just taking standard pieces, putting them together in clever ways to get what you want. Move this over. Another couple duplicate assemblies. All right, another one of those. And this finishes off the fins. I can get it to go on. There we go. Oh, so these ones, they have to rotate in. Otherwise, this top piece won't fit. Did I do that right? Or do they stick out? Oh, they stick out. They rotate like that. That makes a little more sense. All right, now this sits on top. Oh, that's just really nice. Look at that. That is, I love that. I gotta try to remember all of these construction techniques. That's just beautiful. So that's the end of bag number six. Looking ahead, bag seven, looks like we're going to start putting some more stuff onto the front of the vehicle. The front bumper, that's what bag number seven is. Thanks for watching this part. I'll see you on the next part.